Okay, harmonic functions have several very nice properties. Um, and a lot of those properties kind of can be sort of come from the fact that it satisfies the following mean value property. So the mean value pro property. Okay, so pick a point AB. Just forget about harmonic functions, anything like that. Uh, pick a point AB, and we're going to look at the ball. So we'll look at this point AB, and we're going to look at the ball around AB of radius R. This point here is AB. <clears throat> now, the average value of U over this ball is going to be the integral of U. Um, I'm just going to write B. B is always going to be whatever ball we're talking about. It's going to be the integral of u over the ball divided by the area of the ball, which is pi r squared. And I'm going to write b sub r here to let us know the radius is r. Now, for any continuous function, uh, for any continuous function, as r goes to 0, this goes to u of a, b as r goes to zero. So in other words, if I pick a point AB and I take averages around a function over shrinking balls, then the averages are going to go to the function evaluated at that point, if U is continuous. So if I take uh, <clears throat> shrinking averages, of, uh, I take averages over balls that are shrinking down to the point AB, those averages go to U of AB. If U is harmonic, if u is harmonic, we don't have to wait until r goes to zero. If u is harmonic, then u of a, b is equal to its averages over any ball as long as this ball is contained in omega and as long as u is a harmonic on omega. So if I have an omega like this, and I have some ball, if I compute u, the average of u on that disk there, is going to be equal to u of the center point. Now, it doesn't work if the ball goes outside of the domain like that. Like, if u is not harmonic here, this doesn't work. But it does work for that inside ball. Okay, so let me state precisely what the theorem is going to say. So, if u is harmonic on omega, and the ball uh, B, so the ball uh, B of radius R centered at AB is in omega, then the following is true, U of AB is equal to the average value of U over that ball. Okay, so again, like we can apply the theorem to this ball, so check, but we like cannot apply the theorem to this ball since this goes outside of the domain on which U is harmonic. Okay, so let's prove this. So I'm going to actually only prove this for r is equal to 1. And you can do it. I think I can't remember if it's a homework or not. By the way, this looks like some sort of bizarre <laughs> abstract painting of a dog or abstract drawing of a dog here. Um, anyways, I'm only going to do it where capital R is equal to 1. And then either as an exercise or I might even ask you to do it for homework, you can prove this when r is not equal to 1. So proof. Uh, in the case where r is equal to 1. And everything is going to go pretty much the same. There's just going to be a little less writing, and I want to do less writing. Okay, so I'm going to compute this integral as a polar integral. So I'm going to have 1 over pi times the integral um, r equals 0 to 1. I'm going to 1 because the radius of the ball is 1, 
See, I'm integrating over a ball, so I definitely should be doing uh, polar integration. Theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi, and I'm integrating a plus r cosine theta b plus r sine theta r d theta dr. Okay, this is normal polar integration. I'm integrating over a ball, but my ball is centered at a and b, so by writing it this way, uh, no, this, this is like the parameterization. Uh, you know, a plus r cosine theta, b plus r sine theta is a parameterization for the ball centered at the point of a, b of radius one, of, of radius r. Radius little r here. Okay. All right, so now what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to take this r, so the inner integral is a theta integral, so I can move this r out here. And I'm going to look at this here. I'm going to call this function f of r. And what I'm going to show is that f of r is actually a constant. That's where using, that's where the harmonic of, the harmonicity of u is going to come. I'm going to show that f of r is actually equal to 2 pi times u of a, b. And now we're just going to have the integral from 0 to 1 of r times this constant divided by pi. And when you compute it, it's just going to come out to be u of a, b, which we'll get to. Okay, so let's do that now then. Is this blue marker going to work any better with me? So I'll see if the u marker works. So let me look at f of r. So there we go. f of r is equal to this. The integral theta equals 0 to 2 pi u of a plus r cosine theta b plus r sine theta d theta. Okay, don't like the blue anymore. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a derivative. I'm going to take a derivative with respect to time, or sorry, with respect to r. So I'll have a dot here. When I do the derivative with respect to r on the outside, well, r is not involved over here, so I can just move it into the end. I mean, r is, so I mean, r is not involved as one of the limits, and it's not what we're integrating with respect to, so I can just move the r derivative on the inside. And using the, you know, basically I'm going to have to use the chain rule. I'm di differentiating with respect to r is going to be cosine theta times the x derivative of u. I'm not going to write the argument because it's going to get too long for me to fit on the board. Plus the derivative of that with respect to r, which is sine theta times a partial y derivative of u, d theta. Okay, but look, I can write this as a, as a dot product. So I can write this as the so we have integral theta to 2 pi. This is going to be equal the gradient of u dotted with cosine theta, sine theta, d theta. Now, using whatever method you want to, I want you to convince yourself that this is equal to the normal vector. So what do I mean by that? If this, let's say, is the ball that I'm working with, cosine theta, sine theta is going to be the Thing that gives me the uh, the unit normal vector. So if this angle here is theta, it means that vector there is cosine theta, sine theta. And again, figure that out in whatever way uh, you want to. Okay, but now what I'm doing here, this is exactly the integral over the boundary of, of a ball of radius little r centered at the point AB of the normal derivative of u. But by the divergence theorem, this is equal to the integral over that ball, that ball of little radi of radius little r centered at the point a b of the Laplacian of u. But the Laplacian of u is equal to zero on this ball because our ball is in omega, uh, and on omega, u is harmonic. That's why it doesn't work for this ball, because u is not harmonic there. So this is equal to zero.
In other words, f dot of r is equal to 0. <clears throat> well, if f dot of r is equal to 0, this means f of r is equal to f of 0. But what is f of 0? Well, again, this integral right there is my f. If I plug in r is equal to 0, I'm just going to get the integral from 0 to 2 pi. Well, r cosine theta, that's 0 if, if r is 0. And r sine theta, that's 0 if r is 0. So this is u of a, b, d theta. And then, again, u of a, b is a constant as far as, that's, as, far as theta is concerned. And so this is 2 pi u of a, b. OK, so I verified that. I verified that f of r is equal to 2 pi times u of a, b. OK, so I've done that. Now I'm going to take this, plug this into my integral here. So my integral, I'm going to continue this computation. This is equal to 1 over pi times the integral r equals 0 to 1 r 2 pi u of a, b, dr, 2 pi u of a, b, that's a constant as far as r is concerned. I can pull all of that out. The pi's are going to cancel, and I have 2 u of a, b times the integral r equals 0 to 1, r dr. The antiderivative of r is r squared over 2, going from 0 to 1. This is going to be 2 u of a, b, the integral now is equal to 1 half. 2 times 1 half is 1, and so this is u of a, b. Okay, so u satisfies um, this mean value property. And again, it's critical that we have to have that u be harmonic so that we know when I do the integral over this ball, it's equal to 0. Okay, there's a question in the homework where you show the converse to the mean value theorem. In other words, you show that if u, uh, is, if, if u satisfies the mean value property on every ball, then it's harmonic. And basically, you're going to do this proof in reverse and show that if u is not, if the Laplacian of u is not equal to zero, then f of r is not equal, then f prime of r is not equal to zero, and this, you know, you're going to get something that doesn't work. F prime of r will be a positive number, and so you're not going to get something that, that gives you, um, you, you will not satisfy the mean value property. Okay, uh, but I'll, we can talk about that in office hours, but I want you to think through it. Okay, so this lets us prove something interesting. So intuitively, if u represents the concentration of something and the Laplacian of u is equal to zero, in other words, u is a harmonic function, then there should be no humps. Why should there be no humps? Well, if u is diffusing and there's a hump, that hump should diffuse out. So if u is harmonic, there should be no humps. Mathematically speaking, there should be no local maxes or no local mins. So let u uh, satisfy the Laplacian of u is equal to 0 on omega. Um, and we'll assume, we don't have to assume this, but I'm just going to say it explicitly. Uh, we assume u is continuous. On omega, and even up to the boundary of omega. So it's, it's continuous on the boundary of omega as well. Then, Um, U has no, uh, U has no um, uh, local maxes. U has U has no local maxes. Contains a max, so U has no lo local max um, in omega. It attains. A local max, it attains a local max on the boundary of omega, and um, yeah, so there, then U has no local max in omega, and it attains, uh, sorry, it attains an absolute max on, um, on the boundary of omega. Okay, if it has no low, so, so since U is um, continuous, I know it's going, and since U is continuous, and omega together with, it, with its boundary is closed, I know that it's going to attain a maximum on u, either u or sorry, either omega or its boundary, 
It's a continuous function on a compact set, is how we would say that. Um, <clears throat> so if it doesn't attain a local max in omega, that means it has to attain its absolute max on the boundary of omega. Okay, so let's prove this. And I'm going to argue by contradiction. So let's look at this picture over here. So how does the proof going to go? So proof... So assume that u of AB is greater than u of XY in some ball centered at the point AB. Okay, in other words, we're assuming that it's a local max. What does a local max mean? It means it's the top of a mountain. So it's bigger than all of the things that are around it. There might be a mountain peak that's bigger way over there, but for the points near me at the top of the mountain, I'm going to be the biggest. That's what a local max means. So we're going to assume that we have a local max at some AB, and this ball is included in the domain. This is the ball here. And it has radius little r. And we're also assuming that u is not constant. If u is constant, you, harm, constant functions are harmonic. Um, but this is not true. This statement is not true if u is constant. OK, so assume that u of AB is, uh, is a local maximum. Now, by the mean value property, I know that u of AB is equal to 1 over pi r squared times the integral over this ball of u of xy dA. OK. What I'm about to show, I'm going to show that u of AB is less than u of AB, and that will be a contradiction. So what I'm going to show is that if there's a local max at AB, then U of AB is less than U of AB. And that doesn't make any sense. U of AB cannot be a number that's not less to it, less than itself. Okay, so how am I going to do this? Well, U of XY is less than U of AB for all XYs except for AB. And U of AB is equal to U of AB, of course. So this integral is going to be less than 1 strictly less than 1 over pi r squared times the integral over br times u of ab. OK, so why is that? Because for every point except for ab, u of xy is less than u of ab. OK, and if I redefine u here, like if I say u tilde is going to be equal to u, it's going to be equal, u of AB is going to be equal to 0, let's say, but it's going to be equal to u of XY for all other points, then the two integrals are the same, and just as a point-wise inequality, u tilde of XY is then less than or equal to u of AB. Okay, but I don't want to do that. I just want to argue this way. u of XY is less than u of AB for almost every point XY. The only point where it's not true is the point AB. But if I alter an integral at one, if I alter the, in, if I alter the integrand at one point, it doesn't alter the overall value of the integral. So I've got this integral is less than, strictly less than this integral. Okay, but what am I doing here? U of AB is a constant. So I can factor this out of the integral. Now I'm integrating 1 over a ball of radius r, but then I'm dividing by the area. So all of this is just U of AB. Okay, and if you didn't follow that, actually factor this out and try to think about what I'm talking about, what's going on here. You're integrating the function 1 over a ball of radius r. If you integrate the function 1 over a set, it's just the area of that set. So it's going to be the area of br. So the area of br is pi r squared. At any rate, I have u of ab is less than u of ab. So that's a contradiction. So one of two things can happen. Either this equality is false, but I know it's not false because u is harmonic. This inequality is false, okay, or this is false. Well, this is not false. This is just an integral. This is true, so this is good, this is good. The only thing that must be wrong is that inequality there. And the only thing that we use to show that inequality is u of xy is less than u of ab. Then this must not be true. We have a contradiction. Um, similarly, similar arguments, you can replace max with min here as well. Okay, and so something that we can do um, with this fact here is that we can show that the solutions 
to Laplace's equation are unique. Okay, so how can we do that? <clears throat> we can also use the same thing to show solutions to Poisson's equation are unique. Um, so let, so assume um, u1 and u2 satisfy the following. They follow, satisfy the plus u is equal to zero on omega, and u is equal to some prescribed g on the boundary of omega. Now let w equal u1 minus u2. Then, what do I know? I know the Laplacian of w is equal to zero because the Laplacian of w is just equal to Laplace u1 minus Laplace u2, but Laplace u1 is zero, Laplace u2 is zero. So Laplacian of w is equal to zero, and then w is equal to zero, so this is on omega, and w is equal to zero because u1 minus u2 is g minus g, so Laplace is equal to zero on the boundary of omega. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this fact to w. So assume, so I want to show w is equal to zero. So if assume w of ab is greater than zero. Well, w is equal to zero on the boundary of omega. So if w of ab, if ab is a point in the interior of omega, and w of ab is greater than zero, well, this is greater than any value w takes on the boundary. But we showed over there that w takes its maximum on the boundary. So if w of ab is greater than zero, um, if w, so w of ab can't be greater than zero, because if it is, then it means it's bigger than its maximum on the boundary. But that contradicts that. So assume w of ab is greater than zero. Um, I just said it, so I don't know. This can't happen. So w of a, b cannot be greater than zero. Okay, similarly, if w of a, b is less than zero, well, again, this can't happen because I can replace min and max here. So if w of a, b is less than zero, it means that its minimum is occurring somewhere inside of omega. Okay, why is that? Well, I know the minimum occurs somewhere on either omega or the boundary of omega. w of a, b is less than w is at any point on the boundary of omega. So that means the, the minimum cannot be on the boundary of omega, so it has to be in the interior of omega. And well, so this can't happen either. Okay, so neither of those two things can happen. So W, if I pick any point AB, W of AB can't be greater than zero, and W of AB can't be less than zero. Well, if it can't be greater than zero and it can't be less than zero, then it means W of AB has to be equal to zero. And this is true for every AB. So it says W is equal to zero, but W is just equal to U1 minus U2. In other words, U1 and U2 are equal to each other. So if U1 and U2 satisfy the Dirichlet problem for the Laplacian on the domain omega, then U1 and U2 are equal to each other, and that's what we mean by unique. Okay, that is the last video for, for Section 8. I will see you in the discussion forums. I hope you ask questions. I think there are interesting things to think about on the homework. Ask them in the discussion, office hours, or email if you want to, however it works out for you. Thank you.